Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of UNW Strength TV. This will be an on occasion video blog or vlog uh, series covering all things performance training, uh, fitness, as long as, uh, as, as well as health education, and really just kind of anything physical culture. So, hoping to have a kind of series of topics, but then also answer questions and maybe even have some interviews uh, down the road. So, uh, I'm your host, head strength and conditioning coach at the University of Northwestern St. Paul, Taylor Gish. Um, and on the topic uh, on the show uh, this week, we'll be talking about um, intensity and load management, especially as it pertains to in-season athletes. So I kind of want to start the show with like a definition of what does load management mean. We'll then move into why it's important to be mindful of intensity, um, not just in workouts like in the weight room uh, or on the field that I might do, but also in practice. And then some practical takeaways for you guys at the end on how you can kind of manage your own load. So let's get into it. Uh, what is load? Loads or load is just basic um, things that we coaches modify uh, in the practice or training environment to try and enhance your performance. So common examples could be frequency, duration, intensity, number of bouts or reps, all of that kind of changes the load on the, on the athlete or on the human organism. So an example um, of frequency could be like upcoming uh, here in the fall, uh, football is going to have two a days, right? So going from uh, next to no football practice over the summer to two a days is a pretty steep increase in load on the on the athlete. That increase in uh, practice frequency. Um, another example could be like changing the space or size of a drill. Like let's say it's soccer and we're playing a small side game, um, making that all of a sudden um, half field or then full field and not increasing the number of players means you're running more and you've just changed the whole duration. So that is a, um, a much higher load. Um, I could also make something smaller add more players, add another ball, and that would also change the load. Maybe you're playing more intensely now. Um, speaking of intensity, a lot of times we think of that in the weight room as just an additional set, you put on more weight, um, but intensity could also be like the manner at which you perform a drill. Maybe coach says, this is the last one um, if it goes well and you go extra hard or you and your teammates go extra hard on that last one, that is an extra load to the body. So. As you can see, there's a bunch of ways we can intentionally change um, either us ourselves or our coaches kind of help us or encourage us to change um, our load. Uh, now, why is it important to manipulate load? Um, I think we all understand that in order to get better at something, we have to do um, successive bouts of semi-hard things and hard things to improve at something, right? It's kind of like um, no one sharpens a stick without taking a little bit of kindling off and whittling down till that, that point goes from blunt to sharp. Well, it's no different with the human organism in the fact that um, it's actually quite similar. We have to tax the body and do kind of progressively harder things to move towards a goal. Um, the, the secret sauce though and the magic pill is that you don't want to do you know, it's not. It's like a pot of boiling water. I don't want to turn the heat up too much, and then my, you know, my pasta boils over. So um, we really don't want to mess. That's called uh, overtraining and fatigue uh, and under recovery. And so. Um, I think it's important as we hinge into some more, you know, mindfulness pieces on intensity uh, that you keep that in mind, that it is about dialing up, but it's also about dialing load down. So um, we talked about intentional things that we change uh, as far as load, but there's also a bunch of unintentional things that happen in regards to load. I had a mentor who always used the analogy that the human body, um, you only get one battery. It's like a battery. And if I go out and practice, there's a tax to my battery. And if I go out and lift, there's another tax to my battery. But the things we don't think about is like, if I stay up late and eat garbage and oh, I had a fight with my significant other yesterday and I have a test coming up in econ and um, my mom just called and told me my grandma's uh, not doing so well. Like all of those things are also, um, although psychological, some physiological like sleep and nutrition, like some psychological, the lifestyle pieces, like all of that stress and all of that's load on the body and all of that matters. So when you, the athlete, are kind of behind the driver's seat of your own athletic relationship with sport, you have to be mindful of everything, right? Not just um, maybe how you feel in the moment, but how have like you treated your body in the days leading up to this game or this practice or this team lift, whatever that is. So 
maybe now that you're starting to be more mindful of the concept of load, um, and maybe you're like a little bit, <laughs> maybe, I, I hope I haven't scared you in a sense of like, well, everything matters, so now you have to be really mindful of it. I would just simply say that like, be, be appreciative of the fact that, um, the fact that it's okay to go a little easier at first. That's kind of my first uh, of two practical takeaways. Like, it's okay to uh, go easier and then instantly ramp up, right? Because that is so easy to do when I explained you being in control of those dials for intensity. Um, it's why many practices start with a warm up, right? We don't just go hard for basketball right into five on five full court cold turkey. No, like we have a warm up, maybe there's some shoot around, maybe there's like kind of a preparatory drill, something that kind of gets us moving. And then we might slowly work practice towards representing the game. Same thing with, you know, uh, football goes through their warm up, and then we have some individuals and they break that into a, a larger game. And then we're going into like Skelly or some type of seven on seven or something. So um, we're always trying to appreciate that. I would say that you as the athlete also have to do that in the training process. We're coming off of summer right now. We're moving into the fall season. All of our athletes are coming back in the next few weeks and everyone wants to, one, show how much work they got in over the summer, or, and this is not something we all wanna talk about, compensate for maybe the lack of work you got in over the summer. Not here to judge you on that, right? But that's a very real thing that for altogether good circumstances, some of you are on missions trips, some of you are on family vacation, some of you just sat around, that's fine. How you use your time is how you use your time. I'm not gonna hate you for it. We just have to now be mindful of that when we go into the practice setting. If you didn't earn the ability to go hard on day one, you can't go hard, right? If you didn't do the work leading up to it, Right? You don't get it, you don't earn the right to go hard with your teammates on day one, right? And you could, but just know that the risk factors for blowing up or getting injured or, or being susceptible to a risk in sport increase dramatically when you don't appreciate that casual ramp up in loading. So, practical tip number one go a little easier at first when in doubt, all right? Um, I think practical tip number two uh, is just to appreciate the internal loads. College and the season of life is throwing a ton of things at you. And if you go back to that battery analogy, don't overtax the one battery you got by eating like a dummy and sleeping like trash. Like I always tell our athletes here, like you should be eating um, in like kings and queens and sleeping like a baby. Um, so go to bed at a consistent time, make sleep a priority, make the room dark, don't spend, uh, I always check my, even myself with this, like is the time you're spending on social media or on your phone or your laptop before bed, like is it fruitful? Like is it bringing you joy and is it, you know, the most meaningful thing and the most valuable part of your day? The answer I always have for myself is no. So just put it down and go to bed, something that is inherently more meaningful and purposeful and will fill you up more. Um, as far as food stuff, this is broad. We'll probably have more topics on food, but just try and eat things that had hooves and a face or grew in the ground. Like, you know, real things um, that don't start with little and end with Debbie three times a day. Um, I know it's college, but like cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is probably not the most ideal choice uh, for an athlete in season or out. So, um, and as far as your stressors, some of those things you can't control, like when you get a, a phone call with some bad news or something happens, or maybe a boss or a superior at work uh, kind of makes your day um, a little more frustrating. But how are some of the things in your schedule, um, class-wise, homework-wise, that you can um, plan ahead and be more responsible in so that you can reduce the stressors on your life? You know, um, this is a great kind of hinge point in life. This is why the college experience is so sweet, is that you can now realize that you're in control of all these things. I always say, like, draw a circle around yourself and be responsible for everyone inside of it. You can't control what's outside, but you can control what's in that circle, all right? How you respond to things, how you take care of your own business, all of that is immensely important for uh, monitoring and, uh, and playing into that concept of earning intensity and load management. Uh, this has just been real quick. Um, I hope to make these kind of short and sweet. Um, I'm gonna post them both on YouTube as well as on Instagram TV. Uh, if you've got future questions for me, 
hit me up, DM me, um, reach out to me, uh, comment below this video uh, with what you'd like to see, um, or the old fashioned way, face to face, and tell me, hey, let's talk about this next time. Uh, like I said, these are on occasion, so I don't know when I'll see you next, but I hope it's uh, informative and I hope it empowers you um, in your athletic conquests here at University of Northwestern in St. Paul. Uh, I'll be signing off here, and lastly, though, I'd like to thank our sponsors, UNWEagles.com, home to the uh, the best athletic communications uh, um, department in the business. Um, head on over to UNWEagles.com, uh, check out when our upcoming contests are. Um, they're a big help to the show um, and keeping the fuel in the fire. So uh, thank you, everyone. As always, this has been Coach Gish at Northwestern. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.